lab video for performing plaque PCR. So here we have the streaks from the strep lab. Uh, make sure you have the uh, strep plate or whatever plate has the selective agent. That's what you want to use to uh, do your PCR on. All right, we want to do everything aseptically, so let's get a flame going. All right, there we go. And so we need to make our template DNA, and so that's what we're going to use those plaques, uh, excuse me, those uh, colonies for. So let's get out a tube. Remember, always pour. Don't reach. We'll pour out our tube. And we're going to use 100 microliters of sterile water with a, uh, a little bit of colony resuspended in it uh, as our template DNA. So here we have some sterile water and a microcentrifuge tube. We're going to use some loops but we have some special loops, some small blue ones, very small, um, very small loops that can reach down in there. You don't want to use the yellow ones, they're too big. And you'll take whatever uh, colony you want to do PCR on, or in this case, whatever uh, streak we're going to do PCR on, and just scoop some up. The temptation is to get a whole bunch, but you know, you don't need to get a whole bunch. Remember, you can do PCR on a hair follicle, right? So it takes very little DNA. You're going to put it in the water and just really, you know, swish it around. Get the colony, get that, uh, that bacteria off of the loop. So swish it around into the water. And then you can do a, some vortexing of this as well. And so there's your template DNA. Cells, uh, um, and water. And so remember the first step of PCR is to heat up the sample up to uh, almost boiling temperature. That's going to break open these cells and provide the DNA. Um, so you're done with this. You can put this back in the refrigerator. Make sure though that you circle the, um, the sample that you used if you have lots of different streaks so that you know which one it was so you can go back to it if it turns out that it's interesting and you want to uh, subculture it if you want to test it and, and, and find out more about it. Okay, so what else do we need? Well now what we need are the ingredients of the PCR. So what we have here is uh, 25 microliters of master mix already in a PCR tube. So in this case we have that pre -aliquoted. You may need to put that into a tube yourself. And to that we're going to add the ingredients. So we're going to add 20 three microliters of water okay so 23 microliters of water and we'll use that same water right to the tube. So now we've got the volume up to what? So we were at 25, so we're approaching 50, right? Okay, so we're three microliters short um, uh, of uh, of 50, that was 22, I said 23, uh, but that should be 22 microliters. So what are the other three microliters? Well, there are two primers, the RPSL up and RPSL down, but really whatever two primers you're using for your colony PCR, in this case, RPSL up and RPSL down, and our template DNA. Uh, and so we're gonna use a P10. Now we're going to add our template DNA, one microliter, and this is the tricky part. If you haven't been doing uh, a lot of pipetting, one microliter is very difficult because it's very hard to see. One 
microliter is only filling this tip up right there so it's very hard to see it make sure you hold it up to your eyes and see that it's in there and then one microliter you want to add it into the liquid uh, when you can if you can't you have to add it to the side of a tube because one microliter will not drip out of a tube okay so we've got our template DNA now we want to add our primers so we have primer one that's the up primer if this was on ice and it was just provided for you make sure it's not frozen it should move now you can uh, vortex these if they're just fresh from the freezer it's okay to do that a little bit of DNA you can give it a quick vortex again one microliter a little hard to see so be careful make sure it goes into the sample and then our down primer. Again, make sure it isn't frozen and mix it if it needs to be mixed. If it's frozen, then you're not gonna be adding the correct concentration of the sample, right? Because not everything uh, uh, thaws at the same rate. And your sample, if it's partially frozen, may have things that haven't gone back into solution yet. So now we've added 25 microliters of master mix, 22 microliters of water, one microliter of template DNA, one microliter of one primer, one microliter of another primer. That adds up to 50 microliters. So it should look like 50 microliters. If it looks like a lot more or a lot less, you got a problem. So you should always look at your sample and make sure that it looks right. Don't vortex this. Enzymes hate to be vortexed. You can uh, give it a little flick to mix. You can invert it to mix. Just uh, make sure the cap was closed first and uh, flick it back down to the bottom of the tube. All right, put uh, some sort of little symbol on the top to help you find it. You're not gonna be able to write your name on it. It's too small. Take it to the PCR machine. Make sure you fill out the uh, sign-up sheet so we can find it again. And uh, good luck.